When we think of our sun, we tend to picture this great self-consuming nuclear furnace that will one day fizzle out when there is no more hydrogen left to sustain the fusion reaction. But what if this model is wrong? What if the entire premise, and indeed the whole cosmological model itself, is based upon a faulty foundation, that of gravity being the principal driving force behind the universe? We've all seen the sun's corona during an eclipse. This is a region of plasma extending more than 1 million kilometres from the surface of the sun and reaches temperatures in excess of 2 million degrees. But there is a problem here. The surface of the sun itself only reaches 5,000 degrees. How can the heat from the inner core heat the atmosphere to millions of degrees, yet only heat the surface to thousands of degrees? Another anomaly is sunspots. These are regions where we can see furthest into the sun's interior and thus, according to the standard model, should be hotter than the surrounding surface region, given that the sun is hottest on the inside. But in reality, sunspots behave in opposite manner, they are actually cooler than the surrounding region. In order to explain this blatant anomaly, astrophysicists have come up with a warped explanation involving twisted magnetic fields and the solar dynamo, neither of which are proven, let alone having actually been observed. One of the best pieces of evidence for an electrical universe, in my opinion, is the comet. Last October, Comet Holmes exploded in a brilliant fashion, brightening by nearly one million times in only 42 hours, and becoming visible to the naked eye. The comet itself is only three and a half kilometres in diameter. This fantastic coma of fine dust has since expanded to a diameter greater than that of the sun. The sensational astronomical event barely even made the news, and the explanation for the outburst is equally as disappointing that of it being the result of exploding gas from within the comet, despite the fact that Holmes is actually moving away from the Sun, making the sublimation argument very weak. In July 2005, NASA crashed its probe called Deep Impact into Comet Temple 1. This resulted in an immense flash of light, so bright in fact that the sensors recording the event were overwhelmed. NASA failed to predict this energetic outburst, but the Plasma Cosmology team at the Thunderbolt website did correctly predict this event. In 2000, Comet Linear, brightened by more than 50% in less than 4 hours, threw off large quantities of dust and also began emitting X-rays, a telltale sign of intense electrical activity. Time and again, the so-called experts have been dumbfounded by anomalies and mysterious occurrences with comets. The standard model of a dirty snowball comet is well and truly dead. The electrical model has made many successful predictions regarding comets and thus should be taken seriously by the mainstream cosmologists. There are two great examples of where the gravitational cosmological model has falsified itself. The first is with a stellar object known as a pulsar. According to the conventional model, these are highly magnetised rotating neutron stars which emit a beam of electromagnetic radiation in the form of radio waves. The rotation of the pulsar, combined with the beam, produces a pulsing effect, hence its name. But there is a problem with this model. Some pulsars have a pulse rate so high that according to known laws, the pulsar should fly apart under the strain. In order to plug this hole, the mythical neutron star had to be evoked in order to explain how this body could rotate at speeds so fast that under conventional laws should fly apart. But the problem is you cannot pack neutrons together as tightly as hypothesised in a neutron star. Laws in nuclear chemistry prevent this. So what you have with a pulsar is a completely hypothetical model that is unable to explain the observed evidence without straying into abstract physics and untested supernatural forces. The second example is with a stellar object known as a black hole. The first thing to take into account is that no one has actually ever observed a black hole, only the energetic effects surrounding these hypothetical objects. In order to explain the compact energetic activity observed at the centre of galaxies, the black hole was invented using abstract gravitational mathematics. Gravity was chosen as the tool of choice because it was the dominant force of the universe, or so they claimed. There are numerous basic logical problems with these hypothetical objects and clear evidence that astrophysicists have tweaked the model when conflicting observational data was encountered. The jets seen near the black holes are an example of this. They are beams of energised matter travelling at nearly the speed of light away from the black hole. Yet, a black hole supposedly won't even let light escape its grasp, a simple logical contradiction, one that has resulted in another hypothetical object being invented, known as the accretion disk. This was conjured up in order to counter this problem. Again, another untested, unobserved piece of abstract physics created out of thin air. This is how desperate the experts have become to cling on to their gravitational dogma. The next thing I wish to talk about is the redshift controversy. Whilst not directly related to plasma cosmology, it is an important aspect in destroying the so-called expanding universe theory, as well as the Big Bang theory derived from this. Supposedly, redshift can be used to determine the distance of stellar objects from Earth. 
but an expert astronomer called Halson Arp discovered numerous galaxies and objects with different redshifts that were connected to each other, thus falsifying the redshift equals distance hypothesis. One example is galaxy NGC 7603. As you can see, the main galaxy is connected to a smaller formation through an arm of plasma known as a filament. The problem is that the smaller formation has a much higher redshift value than the main active galaxy. Rather than acknowledge this, the experts put this occurrence down to chance locations in the same section of sky. A research arm of NASA issued a press release in the 1980s claiming that two objects, galaxy NGC 4319 and a quasar called Makarin 205, were not connected by a plasma bridge. They also released a photograph apparently showing no connection. Both these objects have very different redshift values, but it can be shown that they are in fact connected together via plasma filament, thus placing them at the same distance from Earth. Why did they release a misleading image, and also why did they feel compelled to issue a press release? I'll leave you to ponder why. So far, I've only mentioned aspects of plasma cosmology in space. Now it's time to bring the focus much closer to home. On December 12, 2007, NASA released an article stating that it had discovered magnetic ropes connecting the Sun directly to the Earth, and that these are also responsible for the aura borealis. The truth is, a man called Christian Birkeland thought of this phenomena himself over a century ago, who coincidentally was born on December 13th. NASA failed to credit Birkeland and also get the terminology correct, Birkeland currents rather than magnetic ropes. Birkeland also recreated many other phenomena seen in space in his laboratory, such as planetary rings and energetic displays of cometary jets. The conventional theory regarding lightning is that it is produced by turbulent interactions of raindrops within a cloud, which generates a charge. Even as a child I knew this explanation was blatantly absurd. Not many people know, but the discharge of plasma we see between Earth and cloud is only half the picture, and plasma formations actually occur simultaneously above the cloud as well as below. These upper atmospheric discharges can reach up to 60 miles above the Earth. It is believed that the Space Shuttle Columbia might have actually been struck by upper atmospheric lightning. NASA denies this and even confiscated pictures from a San Francisco newspaper to silence investigation. Is this yet another example of NASA deliberately suppressing information? In June of this year, NASA announced that it is close to a breakthrough in their work regarding an early warning earthquake system. It was also reported by the BBC that scientists observed a massive signal in the ionosphere just prior to the earthquake which devastated China on May 12th. A previous study examining more than 100 earthquakes with magnitudes 5 or greater in Taiwan over several decades showed that all of these earthquakes were preceded by distinct electrical disturbances in the ionosphere. It seems clear to me that the earthquakes are electrical in some form. One has to wonder if the HARP research program and similar stations Devices capable of putting immense electrical energy into the ionosphere can possibly trigger earthquakes. Biological life would not be possible without electricity, and the role it plays has been greatly underestimated in my opinion. Our cosmological paradigm inherently influences every other scientific discipline, and the disconnected, gravity-driven Newtonian model has surely shielded many aspects of reality from us, at least not in the biological sciences. One should also not forget that light is a form of electricity, and when you consider how crucial light is to our ecosystems, the true importance of electricity becomes apparent. But by far the greatest implication of electricity in nature is surely its role in consciousness. It is now understood that the Earth's magnetic field is not only detected by certain animals for navigation, but by humans as well, and thus it plays a crucial role in our mood and circadian rhythms. The pineal gland in the human brain is very sensitive to magnetic fields, and it is this gland that produces melatonin and regulates our sleep cycle. The resonant cavity between ground and ionosphere is excited by lightning strikes and gives rise to the Schumann resonance, first detected by Nikola Tesla. It just so happens that the resonant frequency matches that of the human brainwave state known as alpha, or a relaxed state. There are also correlations between other brainwave states and the resonant frequencies of other cavities, such as the Van Allen belt, the magnetopause, and even the Earth's crystalline inner core. When you realise just how electrically interconnected biological life is with the Earth, and how the Earth is electrically connected with the Sun, the rest of the galaxy, and even the entire universe, you can begin to appreciate just how important electricity is. We really do live in an electric universe. There is much more fascinating information available that I did not discuss in this video, and I will leave you to discover it for yourself. Throughout space there is energy. It is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very real work of nature.